Hey guys, this is CK of CK Education. Yesterday, if you watched my video, uh, I talked a little bit about the, the surprising truth about millionaires in America. And uh, it was based on this book here, The Millionaire Next Door, which really gives um, us a surprising glimpse of what real millionaires are like in America and um, how they made their money. And if you want details about that, uh, again, I'd encourage you to go back to my previous video and watch it. But today I want to talk about something different. Today I want to talk about um, the difference between being what is defined as a millionaire in America. And remember, a millionaire means that your net worth is a million dollars. That's not that big of a deal if you think of it. I mean, think of someone who has... Um, it doesn't mean you're making millions of dollars per year. All it means is that when you add up all of your assets, that it's a million dollars or more. And if someone owns a home and their equity in their house is, let's say, $500,000, and they're halfway there. But that $500,000 equity in the house can't be spent. It's not like that's money in the bank. As I explained in the last video, it's just available money. I mean, if you sell the house and you profit from the proceeds, then you can keep that money. Um, or you can borrow against your house and borrow some of that money. But in that case, you're just going into debt again. So that really is not a good indicator of financial health in my mind. So I want to talk about cash flow today. And that's how that's different and how I think that's much more important. Like if I asked you, um, if, if I were to offer you a million dollars right now, lump sum, you get a million dollars in the bank. Or, and, and you have to quit your job. You got a million dollars in the bank and you have um, no, no other money. You just get a million dollars, okay? But you have no other income. So you have a million dollars. Or I offer you uh, a cash flow of $10,000 a month. Which would you take? Um, surprisingly, a lot of people would say, I'd take the million right now. Give me the million, I'll put it in the bank, and I'm good. I'm a, quote, millionaire, right? I would take the $10,000 a month. If somebody said, I could guarantee you $10,000 a month, every month for the foreseeable future for, I mean, indefinitely. Okay. I would take that. Um, here's the thing. If you have a million dollar net worth, um, and so a million dollar net worth, like I said, if you have half a million dollars, if half a million dollars of that is in your equity, um, you have a few cars and let's say they're worth $50,000. There's another 50. Let's say you have some money in your 401k or whatever other investments, whatever other, um, you know, retirement funds that you may have or other investment funds that you might have. And you put all that in there and you got your cash that you have hidden under your mattress or whatever. <laughs> and then you got money in the bank, whatever it is. And you add it all up and you're like, I'm, you know, I'm like at a million but your monthly cash flow isn't that much. And you're really living every month, money coming in. And, and when the money goes out, you have very little left. You're sort of in a bind. I mean, every month you're, you're, not, um, you're not that well off. You're not that comfortable. You don't have much cushion. So even if you have... Um, a lot of equity in your house, even if you have two cars that are worth something, you can't go spend the cars. You can't go spend your equity. Those are sort of monies that are stuck, you know, and in your retirement fund, you can't, you can't just go, I mean, you can, you can withdraw it, but you're going to be, you're going to get nailed with, with penalties, early withdrawal penalties and taxes. And so most people don't touch those until they're a certain age, right? Like 59 and a half, I think it is right now. So like, it's just, those are monies that you can really touch. And so what it comes down to is every month you have money coming in and you have money going out. Your income brings money in, the revenue, and then you have expenses that go out. That's cash flow. It's the flow of money that comes in and goes out every month, comes in and goes out every month. And if that is really tight, if the difference between the money coming in and the money going out is very small, you can't do much. You don't have much opportunity. You can't do much every month. You say, oh, you know, I want to go out and eat at a nice place. Oh, but if we do that, then we're not really going to be able to do other things this month. 
if we have a big birthday party for our kids, maybe we can't buy them, you know, the other thing that they, they needed for school or something. If we go on a nice vacation, then we're not going to have enough money to, to, you know, change, you know, replace all the tires on the car that we need that month. You know, so if that cash flow is really tight, you're living a very sort of financially tight life. So even if you're, if, if your net income, your net worth is high, you might say, well, my net worth is $700,000. My net worth is $800,000. You see what the point I'm getting at, you, it might be, but those might be due to your equity and the cars and things that, uh, that are not really touchable, the untouchable money, I, I, I call it. The thing that's important is every month, the cash flow is important. Every month, the money that comes in has to be much greater than the money that goes out. Now, one of the, there's two ways you can do this. I talked about offense and defense last, last month. If you have a very, very high offense, when I, when I say offense, that's money coming in. If you make a lot of money every month, you have a lot of money coming in every month, you might have some debt and you might have money going out, but it may not matter that much because you have so much money coming in. Okay, I know people who, who, who do like, I know dentists and doctors and some IT professionals and, you know, people who make a uh, high income, sometimes they make so much money that relatively, I mean, other people look at it and say, man, they got a lot of debt, but the, the, the difference between the debt and their income is so, so high that it doesn't really bother them. You know, they make so much more than what they owe every month that it's not, even, even if they owe a lot, they still make much more, okay? So th this gap here, the bigger that gap, the better. But we just don't know what happens in life. We don't know what's going to happen in life. In my mind, the safe thing to do is, even if that is a comfortable cushion, I would still work on aggressively eliminating debt. Because imagine this. If, imagine if you're making a certain income and you have debt, and you get rid of that debt. Whatever money that was going out every month to that debt, whether it was mortgages or student loans or car loans or credit card debt, whatever it was, you're not paying that anymore. How is that any different than making that much more money every month without really making more money? Okay, if you were paying four thousand dollars a month in your and, and you, th these are the four big debts in American society, in American life, right? It, it's going to be your mortgage, your car loans, your student loans, and your credit cards. So those four things. But imagine that four, those four things went away you have no you have no uh mortgage no car loans you have no student loans you have no credit card and, and so those went away but let's say every month you were paying four thousand dollars a month and then when all that goes away that's four thousand dollars that you used to pay that you don't pay anymore that is exactly the same as making four thousand dollars because that four thousand dollars now you know that the it, money comes in and it used to be $4,000 going out. It doesn't go out anymore. It stays with you now. So you just made $4,000 without working anymore. Now, it does take work to eliminate those debts. I understand that. Um, and, and it takes years of discipline every single month. Every single month. Just discipline and paying it off. But in the end, it is more than worth it. Because when you get to that level, you suddenly have so much cushion. Even if your income didn't go up, you, you have so much cushion now because that thing that was burdening you, sort of like these shackles around your ankles and your wrists and your neck, you know, it went away. And so you're making that much more that you used to pay. So this is the importance of cash flow and understanding. You know, people focus on, oh, I have a high income or I have... But it's two, it's two sides of the coin. Cash flow is two sides of the coin. It's how much money you make, that's good, but how much money do you have going out? How much money do you have going out? Not in discretionary funds, not in discretionary spending. Like when I say discretionary, I mean like, you know, you're going out to eat, not those things, but obligations. Like I said, the four debts, the four big debts, mortgage, student loans, car loans, and credit card. Those four things. If you have a lot of debt in those four, in any one of those, you might say, I don't have credit card. I don't have student loans. I don't have, I don't even have car loans, but you have a huge mortgage. You still have to pay, right? That's the biggest one. That's the biggest monster. 
I don't know why people don't want to focus on that. I've heard so many people say, oh, I'm debt free. I'm like, wow, man, you're debt free. Like, so your house, when did you pay off your house? And like, well, I mean, I still have my mortgage. And I'm like, then you're not debt free. Okay. Because that's debt. That's the biggest debt. So your, your mortgage is, your, is also debt. And only by getting your debt to zero, I think, um, do you put yourself into a very stable, healthy, um, safe financial situation. So that is what I want to focus on. That is what I want to encourage you to start focusing on. Okay, so in today's video, this is all about cash flow. I think that's much more important than focusing on, I'm going to try to get my net worth to be a million dollars. I don't really think that's a worthy goal. Forget about the net worth stuff. Okay, focus on cash flow. Now, have I, as I've said in many other videos, um, there, there are stages, there are steps in this whole financial sort of health, you know, journey. And um, you, you, have to, you have to work on your income. You have to save up some cushion money. Before you go start going aggressively paying off your debts, I would have cushion money. I would have uh, money. Now, you know, in this recent pandemic and, and for a lot of people still going on, um, some people have lost their jobs, businesses have gone under, and, and a lot of financial chaos going on and has gone on. Um, you just don't know what's going to happen. So you have to have cushion money. And that cushion money is like, even if you lose your job, you can live for six months to a year um, and you have money saved up. And if you can, if at all possible, I would have as much saved up as possible. Like uh, to be able to live a year would be great. Now, I know, understand most people, a lot of people cannot save up that much money that if they lost their job, they have enough money to live a year. Uh, but I'm just saying the more, the better. If you lost your job, if you lost your source of income, if the longer you can live on your cushion money, the better. Okay. And other things, there's other things that come up that, that might require you to tap into that. So you got to have cushion money. And then once you have that, you want to start paying off your debt. I think in my experience, the best way to start with the little ones, like if you have um, credit card debt, let's say that's the smallest one. I would start with credit card debt, start paying that off. And when you're done paying that off, whatever money you were putting into that, I would put that money and put it into the next biggest uh, debt source. And I would keep doing that until you have everything paid off. You got to be consistent. Yes, it takes some sacrifice. It takes discipline. But in the end, it's worth it if you can pay everything off. So focus on cash flow and not on necessarily on net worth. Okay, that's what I want to say today, and I'll see you in my next video.